I want to talk to you a little bit about flex time. So let's go straight to it and have a look. Um, this is a demo from the uh, Apple certification uh, training materials. Let's play a little bit of it. interested in the vocals here so what I'm going to do is just zoom in on it um, and I'm going to solo it relative to the click so that you guys uh, sort the cycle out so Slowly that doesn't repeating no one else has heard me say nothing really flex time who's used it Ooh. Few hands only. Um, right. Flex time is, uh, well, it's not new now. Logic 9's been out a while, but flex time's changed the game a bit. There are some really important things about flex time and the way it works, and I've got about 25 minutes to tell you. Um, so, first thing you guys must remember is that flex time works on the track. So, when you enable flex, it works per track. Everything on this track has the potential to be flexed. You can choose to switch it off for individual regions. More on that in a bit. Um, and the basic deal here, if I uh, grab the flex tool and uh, get the playhead out of the way, um, have a listen to this phrase. Say nothing really and I'd like that to be a bit longer. And I've deliberately forgotten to do something, so I'm just going to click here with the flex tool and Logic helpfully says, you need to choose a flex mode for that track. And this can be very helpful. Um, there are a bunch of flex modes. We'll talk about what they all do and what they sound like and try and shed some light on how you might choose the right one. Uh, but this is important. It's good as a general starting point, <laughs> okay, uh, and it's both the time stretching, same method as Apple Loops, medium CPU load. This becomes important if you're doing it a lot. Um, slicing, good for drums, low to medium CPU. Monophonic, good for solo vocals, hey that's us, right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but if you want super quality used polyphonic, medium CPU load, or finally, Good for all kinds of stuff, excellent quality, but it'll cost you a lot in CPU power. So, I'm going to go with that. Um, the first time you enable Flex on the track, and it is enabled over here, look in the track parameters, there, um, Logic will analyze all the audio files that are referred to by the regions on that track. This one's already been done, so it didn't take time. But if you do it for the first time, there'll be a while well, it thinks about it. And simply what happens then is this. You say nothing really. <laughs> Which might be to your taste or it might not. Uh, I urge you um, singers in the room, you'll know that when you're doing backing vocals or double or multi-tracking stuff, the tricky bit is to get the ends of the phrases tight. And this is a sneaky way of tweaking them so that they are. Um, so let's have a listen to the front of this. Slowly. Now, slowly, two syllables. I'd like it to be fast, right, quickly. So what I'm going to do here is click and hold and do that, and then click and hold and do that. Could have done something with that, but... What's happening over here? I'm only proceeding. Yeah, that's too long. Click in there, shorten that a bit. I'm only proceeding. Uh, uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, so, 
Lesson number one. It, while it is magic, you have to be a little bit careful. I managed to stretch a small, and it's gone like a cat being strangled. Right? I, I might need to get in there and fix that. Or I might need to do a command Z and think again. Um, I'm moving audio about. This is scary. Um, I'll show you one last thing here. If you use the marquee tool, uh, Christ, I've lost track of where I was at with this, let's just do this. And then you turn on flex mode so that you can see how this works. If you use the pointer tool, I can move the whole phrase. Whoa. Uh, this is going to sound terrible, but you'll get the idea. Slowly repeating, no one else has heard me say. Nothing. Uh, so I'm flexing audio, I'm moving it around. The whole thing works with these little grey lines here. These are transient marks. When you first enable flex on some audio, logic analyzes it for what it thinks are peaks in the signal. These yellow orangey things are flex markers and those are the things that were automatically created when I was not in flex view and that's how I stretched oh shoot that's how I stretched the audio I'm having a bad hair day if I had any hair right um, don't laugh that's good kind so these flex markers become super important um, if you're working let me scoot up here and do it on a, an unadulterated one. If you're working with flex view on, and I did that here, you get this little white line thingy here. When you click in the top half of the waveform, you can create a flex marker. If you click near a transient, you get this gulf T affair, and that will snap to the transient. Let's do that again. Like. These things I like to describe as drawing pins. They pin the audio, so I can move where this pin is, but the stuff the other side is pinned by the two flex markers either end. So when you're working with flex mode off, and you use the flex tool, you automatically if I click here, if I click and move it, three flex markers. When flex view is on, you can create single flex markers, or watch carefully, if you put the pointer down here, you get a three prong affair. Let's have a look at what that does. Um, if I'm near transients, it'll create three flex markers snapped to the transients. If I'm in the middle of nowhere, it'll create one where I click and then two on the transients either side, acting as drawing pins. So I can start moving stuff around again. And if you're using the marquee tool, as you saw earlier, what you actually get, if I marquee this bit and then switch back to the pointer, you get four so you can move the whole phrase and there's another piece of cat noise in there look. Another... Yeah. What? <laughs> so the crucial thing is what would you do with that and what I'd do with it is put another flex marker in and move that back and with a bit of luck Another... Uh, not quite, it's doing what? something in there right? No. It's, not mag it's not perfect I obviously need to move things slightly, maybe if I moved where this flex marker was to try and get past that noise and maybe play with that. I am doing silly amounts of moving. Um, so that's part one of flex. You can use it to correct the timing with audio.